Today I'm going to show you how to create this faux brick and plaster wall. It's all new material, but it's meant to look super duper old. Stick around and I'll show you how to recreate it. I'm covering the wall with brick paneling. This is available at local big box stores. This particular style is from Home Depot. I transferred the location of my outlets and lights. And on this first sheet, I cut them perfectly. You see my husband came up to help me for a minute. And I set this in place, it fit perfectly. I glued just along the edge on the seam. Now this seam I knew was going to be a problem and since I'm putting plaster on it later, I thought it would hide okay. So I cut the next piece and transferred the location of the next light and outlet and cut those out in the same manner. But when I put it in place, I didn't quite cut the holes in the right locations. I didn't want to waste the whole sheet, so I cut along the grout line and cut out a zigzag of pieces that I could come back and patch later. I think that the seams will hide this way much better than just the straight seam down the side of the panel anyway. And I had thought that I might do this along the seams between panel pieces because they're only 48 inches wide. And just for speed and convenience, I didn't do it on that first seam. Since I have to fix this panel anyway, I'm going to go ahead and patchwork the next seam. I'm putting adhesive on the entire piece since I have so many little fingers sticking out. I use a couple blocks of wood to shimmy this piece into place so that the bricks on the first and second panel are perfectly lined up to make that first seam as invisible as possible. Then I used my table saw and my miter saw and cut a whole bunch of bricks. I cut off as much of the grout as possible so I just have the brick. And then I used the construction adhesive and glued each brick in place one by one. Around the light I just used a pencil and traced where I needed to cut and cut it with the jigsaw and glued it in place. I did the same thing for the outlet, making sure to get the brick underneath the tabs on the light switch and the receptacle. And then I went ahead and tried to deal with my blunt seam. I used an orbital sander, a hand sander, an oscillating tool to kind of scrape up the blunt edges, and then I covered it in plaster. Let that dry and sanded it again. And I went ahead and started to fill those seams around the light switch and the light box um, just by smushing joint compound into the holes. And I'll show you more details on filling these holes and hiding these seams later. Right now I want to finish the wall and before I do that I have to bulk out my molding because I've done it in the rest of the house and I want my molding to be uniform in the entire house. So I went ahead and did that. And if you're interested in how I did that, I do have a video coming and there is a blog post on my blog. So see the video description and I'll give you a link to that. After addressing the window, I can get on with the brick wall. Along the window, I just have to match up the brick and cut the piece where it needs to be, where it's gonna butt up to the window molding. And then I cut along the grout line and bust out the half bricks that are going to kind of insert or go in between the little fingery bricks that were stuck out on the wall. I mean, it makes more sense to, to see it than it does to hear me explain it. So that's what I did. And I just glued it all in place with construction adhesive. I used nails where there were studs. And you can see I put green tape on the ceiling um, to show me where my studs were. Once the entire wall was covered with brick and the construction adhesive was set, I went ahead and plastered in between all of the little seams that I had created. And this is just joint compound. I smoosh it in, let it dry, go back and smoosh in a little bit more. Now I'm planning on painting my wall when I'm done with all of this so I'm using joint compound because it's going to be sealed if you wanted to just use plaster and then leave some of the brick exposed you'd want to use something that you didn't have to go back and seal or I guess that you could seal with a transparent sealer 
So I don't know exactly what you would do in a different situation, but in this situation, I'm planning on painting afterwards. So I covered all of my seams with a joint compound, and now I'm going back over and I'm just smearing joint compound over the entire wall, scraping some of it back off, putting some more of it on. Um, I'm covering up all the nail holes and smushing it into the seams. And I let that dry and then I come back and kind of scrape it and then apply some more plaster. I really wanted it to be layered on so that it would look old. This is the kind of project you could mess with forever. I sanded and wiped and sponged some of the joint compound back off to expose more of the bricks. I sanded with an orbital sander to expose more of the bricks. And then I felt like it was too smooth. So I took some joint compound and smeared it back on and then troweled it out to purposely create texture. And then after I felt like it was at a good point, I let it all dry. I'm only using primer because I want it to look chalky and old, but it will seal the joint compound. So I waited it about an hour so the primer was dry but not cured, and I scraped some of the paint back off to expose the brick. The paint came off at this point in little chunks and segments. So it's just another layer of this aging process that I think makes it look really cool. Because I exposed some of the joint compound, I'm going to have to go back with a clear glaze and seal the entire thing again. A clear glaze, maybe a whitewash, I don't know, something. If you see me a year from now and I'm still working on this wall, I need an intervention. I think it looks cool for now though, so I'm going to move on. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.